Good morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Canon Rachel Firth. Welcome to worship with the community of St. Peter's Parish Church, Huddersfield. As we worship today, the words of our hymns will appear on the screen and the order of service is on our website if you want to go and get that so you can follow the words and join in with the prayers as we pray and praise the Lord together. Today we welcome the Bishop of Huddersfield, the Right Reverend Jonathan Gibbs, as our preacher and sections of our service, as always, will be led by members of the community. As our worship begins, I invite you to sing with me in praise of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that great Trinity hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also with, with you. We begin our service with our opening prayers and our prayers of confession. Jesus our Saviour speak to us that, that we, we may hear your, your word. Spirit move among us that, that we, we may know your, your glory. glory. Loving Father, receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. How often have I longed to gather your children, 
As a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord, but you would not come to me. Let us, as wayward children, return to God and confess our sins. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the God of grace, who sent Jesus into the world to save sinners, bring you pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 I invite you to bow your heads with me now as we pray today's Collect Prayer. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to hear Thea read for us from St Paul's second letter to the church which had been established amongst the people of the city of Corinth. We hear of his desire for peace in the church. Good morning all. This morning scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians 13, 11 to the end. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for the full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand, if you wish, and if you're able now, as David reads for us from Matthew chapter 28, Jesus' great commission to us as believers to teach and share our faith in word and deed. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's very good to be with you as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity. It used to be said that vicars got their curates to preach on Trinity Sunday so that they didn't have to try and explain what the Trinity was all about. Well, this year, for good or ill, you're getting the bishop instead. Our Bible readings immediately raise some problems for us, given the current situation. In 2 Corinthians, for instance, St Paul tells us to greet one another with a holy kiss. Well, that would certainly break the lockdown rules for a start. Having said that, there are some wonderful themes here for us to consider that can help us understand more of what God is like and about how he calls us to serve him even in these strange times. And the first thing is this, that the God who has revealed himself to us in and through Jesus Christ is above all else a divine community of love. That is what we see throughout the ministry of Jesus, beginning at his baptism, at which he is affirmed as God's son by the voice of his heavenly father and anointed for his ministry on earth by the Holy Spirit. Nothing about Jesus makes sense unless we see and understand him as part of the Holy Trinity. St Paul sums up this central understanding of who God is in the closing words of 2 Corinthians, using the words that we know as the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. What the first Christians found as a result of their experience with Jesus during his ministry on earth and with the Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost was that they could only make sense of who God is by speaking of God as both one and three. Or as the theologians would later say, three persons in one God. Now, in a very real sense, the theology is less important for them and for us than the experience. What matters is that we should experience God in this same way, as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and as a divine community who invites us to be part of that fellowship of love. Whoever we are, wherever we come from, we are invited to be part of that divine community, sharing in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. This is for everyone. And no one needs to be left out. That's the first thing about the meaning of the Trinity. The second thing is this. Just as we are invited to be part of this divine community, so we are also called to reflect that community in the way we live, and especially in our relationships with each other. In 2 Corinthians, apart from a bit about greeting one another with a kiss, which we can't do at present, Paul says to the Christians two things. Agree with one another and live in peace. What Paul is saying is that how we get on together as members of God's family should reflect the same kind of self-giving love that exists between the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Right now, this is something we really do all need. It's the kind of loving care and compassion that people need in a time when many of us are feeling 
anxious and afraid. And it is the sort of loving community that many people are longing for when they are feeling isolated and alone. This is the kind of fellowship that we should be trying to create in our church communities, even though we cannot actually meet together physically in the same time and place. And as I'm in touch with clergy across our area, this is precisely what I am seeing happening time and again in different ways. We may not be able to greet one another with a kiss, but we can reach out to others and embrace them through a phone call or even practically through some act of kindness. We are called to reflect God's divine community of love in the way we go about our lives and the life of the church. Finally, and yes I know this isn't easy at present, we are commissioned to draw others into this divine community of love. Jesus says, go and make disciples, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, you might say, how can we do that when we're stuck at home and can't even gather at church? But in fact, what I am seeing and hearing time and again is the way in which churches are finding new ways of connecting with people and of drawing them into the fellowship of the church. Through online services on Sundays and during the week. Through keeping in touch with people on the phone. Through sharing messages of encouragement, of, of joy and of laughter on social media which has got to be better than the nasty stuff that so often does fly around on the internet. How we go about these things now will lay important foundations for how we are able to do them once we can welcome people back into our buildings as the lockdown finally begins to ease. So, three things. Well, what else? about the Trinity and what it means for us. We are invited to join in the divine community of love between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are called to reflect that community of love in our relationships with one another. We are commissioned to draw others into that community of love both now and after the lockdown. Thank you for all that you are doing, and may God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, now and always. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We, are... we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Father through the love of the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus called his disciples to preach his word to all people, we pray that the church throughout the world may reflect the unity and harmony of the Holy Trinity, offering support and encouragement of faith to all corners of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the leaders of our world strive not to seek personal gain, but only that which is good for all mankind. In this time of uncertainty, help all people to work together in peace and concord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, Lord, to keep watch over our families and friends and all our church community. Teach us to live together with love, respect and consideration strengthening and supporting each other in good times and in bad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your healing love, heal the hearts that are broken, dry the tears of anguish, calm all who are afraid and ease the pain of all who are suffering. Let them know that you are with them. Let them know they are not alone. In a moment of quiet, let us bring before God our own cares and fears. Bringing all our burdens, sorrow, sin and care, at thy feet we lay them and we leave them there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have died and pray that they may rise to new and eternal life, free from pain and restored forever in God's unending love. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Heavenly Father, eternal and ever-present, we offer these prayers to your triune majesty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to Sandy for leading our community prayers this morning. Please remember, if you would like the community of St Peter's to be praying for something that you have on your heart, we pray at 9am and 8pm, Monday to Friday, live on Facebook. And you can request confidential prayer too from our prayer group. We're now going to sing together again. During this time, you may wish to consider making a donation to the work of St. Peter's, enabling us to be here for you today and all the work of our parish in the heart of the town. As you may imagine, lockdown has seen a significant drop in the church's income and we need your help if we are to be here in the future. Please find details on the giving page of our website of how you can make a donation. All we give, of course, is in gratitude for all that God has given to us. Let's sing now. Breathe on me, breath of God.
I invite you to join me now in this virtual and spiritual communion, praying that we may connect here with one another and with God. Let us pray our thanksgiving for these and all God's holy gifts to us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and, and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your Holy Church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with angels and archangels, with the cherubim and seraphim, we speak for ever of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary the God-bearer, Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim the Lord's, Lord's death, death until, until he comes. comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sin, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
I invite you now to bow your heads and join me as we pray the post-communion prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This week we're going to hear back from Sally about how our children have been exploring the gospel alongside us this week. Good morning, Junior Church. This week, we're learning how we can live and learn through worship and our daily lives. Jesus promised, I will always be with you. That's good news to hear. You are never truly alone. Jesus is always with you. God is always with you. Jesus asked his disciples to tell people about this good news. And because we are all disciples, Jesus is asking us to do that too. While this could be hard at this time of social distancing and lockdown, but we decided that we'd try and make these people, these paper dolls. So each one of them has a loved one or a friend that we want to share the good news with. So when all this social distancing and lockdown is, is gone and we can finally be with these people that are on here again, we'll be sharing this good news. So until then, we've said a prayer that each person that's on here and we've shared through prayer the good news so if you'd like to do this too it's really easy all you need is some scissors paper and a pencil so you start with a plain piece of paper which we've got here which we folded in half and then we folded again And then we folded again and again. So we ended up with this sort of springy shape. So it's a concertina. Lots of life to spread that good news. And on that shape, we drew the person. It doesn't have to be a very good person, as you can see. It just has to be a person looking shape. But the really important thing is the hands and the feet need to be on the edges. So you cut the shape out of the concertine tightly shut, which can be a bit tricky. And when you open it up, the magic happens and you create this magical, fantastic string of people holding hands. Well, don't worry if some of the, some of the cutting out has happened and they're not holding hands or, or something's gone wrong and they, they're all individual people. That's OK. If you want to produce them into this nice string of people, you can use some sticky tape, which is what I use to stick these different colours here together. So we have to think very carefully about people that you want to put onto these loved ones and friends that you might be with or you might not be with, that you'd like to share this amazing good news. So this week, I'd like you to think about where God is. So every day, where's God? Where have we seen God in our daily lives? Where is this good news? So today, for me, I found God in a smile and having a cup of coffee brought for me that I haven't had to make myself. I wonder where you will find God this week. So stay safe this week and remember, God is always with you. Amen. We've reached that time in our service where I share community notices with you. The third edition of our lockdown newsletter is now in circulation and you can find that on the website and some hard copies are being delivered to those who can't access online. Please do download one or contact us if you're not on our mailing list so that we can share these with you in the future. I want to thank those of you who took the time to send in photos of your Pentecost celebrations last week. 
Special thanks to Navia and Keenan Brooks for your wonderful, joyful pictures. Look out for them in the pictures at the end of the service today. I know there is a lot of talk about when churches might be able to reopen at the moment. And I just wanted to speak with you briefly about that. However much we may long to be back together, the back together we long for where we can hug and pray and sing, share the common cup and communion and be close to one another remains a long way off. That will be the last thing to return. The staff team and I are constantly reviewing the latest information, which comes from the diocese and the National CV guidance, and we will move towards opening as soon as we are safely able to do so. So let's join our voices in song once more in our final hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Is the Lord of hosts. The, the whole Lord earth is, is full, full of, of his glory. glory. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due his name. The, the whole, whole earth, earth is full, full of his glory. glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord Lord's shall give his people the blessing of peace. Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Blessing and honour and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can conceive, be to you most holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, by all angels, all people, all creatures for ever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those who you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. 
Thanks be to God.